What kind of stuff should be in your lease? Today on the Landlord Coach Daily Is Show, let's drop the needle. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, ignition, lift off. Hey everyone, welcome to the Landlord Coach Daily Is Show. My name is Mark Dolfini and host of the Landlord Coach Daily Is Show. It's really good to see you. Thank you. I've had a bunch of new friends all of a sudden reaching out from all all across the place. I don't know what's happening, but it's nice to nice to see some fellow real estate investors on there that know know our struggle. So uh, if you're joining me on the show today, welcome. It's nice to see you. So today, what we're going to be talking about is uh, what kind of stuff should be in your lease. And um, what prompted this question, and I was actually, this was something I was going to address last week, but uh, just a couple of things came up, and uh, so I decided I'll just kick the can down the road, but what kind of stuff should be in your lease? And I kind of addressed some of that stuff last week, and by collectible and enforceable, and I'll go back to this here in just a second. But before I do, if you're interested in some free stuff and also some stuff that you can buy, high value stuff, you can check out landlordcoach.com forward slash videos. You can check that stuff out there. I'm going to be talking about a lease here for a second, so you may want to, I'll bring this back up here in just a second, but what kind of stuff should be in your lease? And, and let me let me back up just a second. The lease is definitely foundational to what you're doing in the rental business. There, I think everybody can agree to that. That's why the lease is probably one of the things that gets, you know, that people think that that's where it starts. And it is definitely, certainly foundational to what you're what you're wanting to accomplish and you want a good solid lease. The thing that kind of frustrates me is that people literally spend zero amounts of time or effort actually constructing a lease that's in alignment with their business model. And I'm not even sure they've really given any any thought to the business model. Again, I'm not I'm not judging you because this is more confession than judgment. I'm just saying Let's take the let's take the rental property business out of it for just a second. Let's pretend that we're going to get into the business of we're going to open a coffee shop. And I'm imagining that you probably have an idea for your own coffee shop and the way that you want to run it, the way that people come in, you know, you probably don't want to model it exactly after a Starbucks or exactly after another coffee shop that maybe you visited somewhere that you thought was cool, you probably want to put your own flair on it. You probably want to do stuff a little bit differently. It's your business. Why not? Right? So the thing that makes me wonder is if we can agree that the lease is so foundational to what it is that you're, you know, to the, to the rental business, why in the world does it seem like the world goes out and wants to steal a lease from everybody else doing exactly what everybody else is doing? And the thing that really is um, is really scary about this whole, this whole thought is that, and again, this is exactly what I did. Now, back when I got started back in the 1800s, the internet was not around. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, I mean it, it, or it was around, but it just wasn't as, you know, it was like it was today. The information age was definitely dawning and, You know, uh, Yahoo was kind of the the go-to search engine and Google, I don't even think was on the, on the, on the horizon even yet. But the, the really funny thing was I searched the internet just like everybody else does today. That hasn't changed and basically steals a lease from wherever they can find it. They don't really give any consideration in terms of where the lease is based out of, like what state, what what's you know what's legal in their area right um or even if it's a property manager that's using the lease or an individual landlord that's doing the lease or whatever right they're just taking the lease and using it as here's my lease again i totally understand why it's happening but i want you to think through the logic of actually doing this and the thing that and i wrote about it in the time wealthy investor 2.0 but i when i did this i wound up with this frankenstein lease that one part, like parts of it just weren't even legal or enforceable in my area. It, uh, other parts of it used phrases like magistrate, which in my local area is not really a common term. It, it's recognizable, but it's not like, it, it just wasn't, it wasn't used. Um, other things were just flat, not 
uh, not legal because um, I remember parts of the lease um, had their return of the security deposit in 60 days. Well, in my state, it's 45 days, and that's by statute. And if you go over that, you have to return the security deposit without any possible repercussions. In other states, sometimes you have to return twice the amount or three times the amount of the security deposit as punitive damages because you didn't return it in time. And I promise you, your residents are going to know that, <laughs> right? So these these little things can really put the screws to you if you're not careful. So why in the world would you not want to take care, you know, be careful about that? The other thing, let's go back to the, to the coffee shop example, right? You're starting this business because you see a business opportunity where things could be um, could, could, um, you could do business a little bit better perhaps because you could satisfy that clientele perhaps a little bit better than who's being currently serviced. That's one of the re main reasons why I got into single family dwellings as, um, as a, well, as a, basically a rental property operator back in my early days as a landlord. I just saw a really good opportunity for people to rent houses and and i was right people would i mean the the demand for houses was really really strong and it's still in my local area it still really much is so the interesting thing was you know i did not base my rental property uh, or my leases i did not base that lease on any sort of business plan whatsoever i just kind of put it together and thought well you know, this kind of makes sense, that kind of makes sense. Oh, I guess I'll adopt that policy because it's in this lease. Well, that's exactly backwards from what, you know, what I should have done. What I should have done is thought it through in terms of what it was I was trying to accomplish in the first place and then find a lease or craft a lease or get a lease put together that would align with that vision, right? Does that sound familiar, right? The VIP method, which I taught in the the time wealthy investor 2.0 again i start with the end in mind put a vision together put um put my vision in terms of what it is i'm trying to accomplish down first and then reverse engineer a business that delivers that vision for me that's exactly backwards from what i did i got all the pieces and put them together and tried to make this this you know lego monster into something that was you know a work of art and it wasn't it was a mess and it took me i mean it probably took me a good let me think now, probably six or seven years to get a lease together that was actually starting to <laughs> look like something that I could be proud of. The first time I had a, an attorney look at it, the, the attorney looked at me and was like, who wrote this? <laughs> and I was like, oh, a friend of mine who's, you know, uh, got, you know, who, who's a first year law student, you know, like something I, I was embarrassed to admit what I had done. He knew what I did because it was evident. There was, it was, I mean, copied and pasted and and there was misspellings and all sorts of stuff that were in the lease. So here's what I would suggest. Um, if you're going to do this, if you're going to copy and paste and, you know, steal from the leases and other things like that, people do that stuff all the time, or they adopt a certain phrase or a certain paragraph in one lease that they're like, man, that's actually a really good idea. That stuff goes on all the time. Um, especially as the, uh, the laws evolve, especially as things evolve, especially as um, as it's put back on the landlords to do certain disclosures. Um, you know, you might have to disclose that your property is in a flood zone, you know, some things like that. You might have to disclose, um, of course, everybody knows about the, the lead paste paint, uh, lead, lead paint and lead, lead hazard disclosure that we have to make for properties of a certain age and so forth. But you know, that there's certain things that come up just from your state's legislator. Generally, it isn't, isn't uh, so much on the federal basis, but more on the local and state basis that you have to make these disclosures, right? So what I would suggest is look at the business model that you're trying to establish first and foremost. Once you get the business model established, then you can start putting a, a lease together that makes sense. Now, the generally, I don't I don't promote my my lease. I call it the million dollar lease, and I and for a long time I was really rejecting wanting to sell the lease, only because a, I I do make that as part of the course, but I recognize that sometimes you just have to give you know <laughs> you have to sell people what they want, even though it's not necessarily what they need. But I I really feel like my lease is good because it does follow the VIP method and it does follow everything that I taught in the book. So. I do offer that as an option. If you want to go to that that, that uh, site, the, the landlordcoach.com forward slash videos, you can get it there. Um, I think it's a, honestly, it's an amazing value for, for what it is. But um, 
If not, I mean, then get in front of your attorney and tell him or her specifically what kind of lease that you're, that you're wanting. Tell them specifically what kind of things that you want to put in place, what, what kind of things that you, you know, that you're wanting to enforce and things that you, that are going to match up with your skill set, that are going to match up with your tolerance for risk. If you want, um, you know, uh, a grace period, for example, where you want your late fees to land, you know, what's, co what's enforceable, right? What kind of things can you enforce? What kind of things are actually collectible? Um, you know, what order should you re be receiving payments in and on and on and on. All of that stuff would, would an attorney should be able to walk you through, but keep in mind, they're giving out the same lease too. They've got a, they've got kind of a te boilerplate template lease that they're going to use for their clients who, who ask them to put a lease together as well. So again, you're kind of going back to exactly the same thing that I talked about that you're getting a lease like everybody else. So the reason I like my lease is because it's just, a, it, it is a template, but you can, but it's going to tell you specifically different things that you can change in there. It's going to give you recommendations, but you can change it all. And that's the reason why I like it as a, as a, as a sample. It is not a substitute for legal advice. So you do have to get an attorney to look at it after you make all your adjustments, make sure it's legal in your area, that you're not making any, uh, putting anything in there that is wrong or illegal or anything like that. But that's why you're going to need, you're going to need a good attorney on your team anyway. One specifically that is, um, that is familiar with landlord tenant law. So please don't go out and get your brother's former dog owner's patent attorney and figure that and think that that's going to be a good substitute for, um, <laughs> for good legal advice. All right. Well, that's all I have for today. Again, if you want to go ahead, get, head on over to landlordcoach.com forward slash videos. You can check out anything uh, there that is of interest to you. And that's all I have for today. Please be sure to place a value on your free time because if you don't, someone else will. Most important, there is no amount of money that will make time irrelevant. Have an awesome day and I'll see you next time.